Good morning everyone. Judging by that first bit, you would probably be thinking that I'm taking the RX-7 on track, which one day I can guarantee will happen. Lol jokes, never. <laughs> this thing will never go out on track. This is this thing is, is my dream car. It's staying 100%. I'm, I'm sorry for all you guys that have to hear that. Maybe one day we'll take it out on like a little cruise. I think that'll be fun. Either way, today we're heading down to the Tampered Motorsports Budget Enduro. I was actually invited out to come and drive in a proper setup race car by Turbo Tristan, the man himself. So we are actually going down today to go door-to-door -to -door racing in a car that I have never driven, never even been in. Uh, it's a fully set up car with uh, no interior, everything else as well. It was all done on a budget. We're jumping in the Raceworks Honda Accord. I've never driven front wheel drive. I've never driven door-to-door -door racing. I've never driven anything along these lines, but it's just gonna be a good time. And once again, after you guys saw the last video, you guys will know that my goal this year is to never say no to a track day. So here we go. Third track day in and I'm door-to-door -door racing in a Honda Accord Euro. Yeah, okay, <laughs> let's send it. And uh, I thought because we're gonna be taking the BRZ to all these different track days, we'll take the FD today. Because why not? It's a good day for it. Right. Second time here at Sandown Raceway. And can I just tell you guys, I am stoked to be back out here today. Sandown is a very, very, very fun track. It's very, very sort of technical. It's a lot of really fast straights, a lot of really slow corners, so it's, a, it's just good fun all around. It's a, it's a beautiful circuit. Very nice, a little bit different to Phillip Island, but still cool nonetheless. And here's the chariot. Turbo Tristan. What's up? What's up, mate? How are you? Check it out. I'm, uh, I'm nervous about this. How? It should be. Ooh, my me, my, my ND filter. <laughs> no, this thing is absolutely beautiful. Um, I've never driven front wheel drive. Is that going to be an issue? <laughs> it's no. uh, very forgiving. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so what do we got here? So you guys pick this up for one and a half grand or some dumb thing like that. Yeah. 1500 bucks. Yeah. So we sold the wheels off it for 300, the cat for 700, and then um, so it owes us pretty much 500 bucks. <laughs> and uh, yeah, everything else is from our sponsors, and yeah. yeah. So we got coilovers, max PD rods, mm -hmm. um, plugs, air filter, um, all from Raceworks, yep. Exidy. X City Clutch held yeah. out the brand new clutch and Protex brakes yeah. all around, which is pretty cool. Only those Street Series, I think, or something like that, isn't it? Or yeah, the Ultra Ultimate pads. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the stock rotors. We yeah. haven't got a slot or anything yet. So. Yeah. If you guys want to see the entire build, make sure to go check out Tristan's channel, which I'll link down below as well, so you can see everything that's going on with this car. But at the end of the day, it is like a budget nugget, which we're just going to send around a track for six hours and hope it runs. Yeah, yeah. We've got <laughs> stuff to rebuild it if we spin a bearing. We're just working with the stock uh, K24, yep. 2.4. I still can't believe you did this sort of rattle can. I need you to do all my painting from now on. I'm terrible with it. Yeah. <laughs> A bit of a painting nut. Yeah. It's very satisfying. Uh, that's right. You painted the Civic with rattle cans as well. Yeah, I only found that out from the um, full, boost full boost video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, it's super nice. And uh, yeah, once again, if you want to see anything on the build, definitely go check out Tristan's channel. But no, nah, this thing is absolutely awesome. And thank you so much for inviting me down because I'm like, mate. I'm so stoked. <laughs> well, you've been doing the good numbers in the BRZ, so we needed a good. The 86. Car. It's not. No, it can't be a BRZ. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, everyone calls it the 86. Dirty, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, gross. <laughs> no, once again, cheers for bringing me out. Hopefully, I can make the team proud. We'll see how we go. <laughs> Mate, I've no doubts. You, you're, you're a natural, actually. So I'm very impressed with you. Cheers, because, cheers. Uh, well, you're me <laughs> well, one of the coolest things about today is the fact that anything under a, a what was it, 90 second lap? 95 second yeah. lap? Minute, minute 35. Minute 35, 35, yeah. So anything under a minute 35 is not counted today. So. Um, as long as we stick to that, or just above that, should be mid. Yep. Minute, minute <laughs> 35.01 and we're sweet. Alright, beautiful. <laughs> Alright, well I'll make it consistently that and we'll be sweet. <laughs> so yeah, it should be really good. I've only ever done this track one more time in the past with the BRZ. And that was my first ever time on a big track, so I'm just going to send it and see how it goes. So we're currently in, I think, third due to a few like little missed laps. Aside from that, um, yeah, I think we're in third, maybe? Uh, yep. Yeah. Third? There we go. Because of a few little mislaps, because people going under 135. Um, so it's getting close, but awesome day. We're about to go in and do our stint, and I wish I was luck. 
Right there guys, I don't know if you can hear me, but uh, we're on track. And I'm in a few covered seats. That's okay. Oh, this thing is going to feel amazing. So one thing about this track, this track day, is the fact that we can't lap under a minute 35. Otherwise you get disqualified, so... Rodeo guys, here is my session. So I am driver three, so I'm about to start my one hour stint and I believe we're in second place. Now, you guys can all see as I come into the first corner, I was a little bit hesitant as to trying to overtake this XL, simply because I didn't know how crazy we could go with uh, overtaking. I didn't want to run into anyone and obviously being my first time door-to-door -door racing, I didn't want to screw it up into the first braking zone. So anyway, you will see very quickly, uh, I end up I ended up getting side by side with the Falcon and uh, that's when I realized that this door-to-door -door racing thing was actually real and so I planted it and went for it. And here is the start of the issues. I didn't put my phone in properly, and so as I was going around the corners, my phone was slipping in and out of the phone holder. I had no idea how to fix it. I never used that phone holder before, so for the next couple of laps, I was fighting managing to keep my phone up there on the dash. The issue if my phone fell out was that I wouldn't know my delta, I wouldn't know if I was lapping underneath 135, so it was a big issue and uh, I was definitely trying to stop that whilst I was catching up to the other cars, so uh, yeah, <laughs> not so great. At this point I caught up to the cars in front and I was really really nervous as to whether I should overtake or not. It's a big gamble because if you go faster than the cars in front and you overtake them, obviously you have to then slow down to make sure that you're over a minute 35. So if you're lapping and you're on the brink of a minute 35, you then kind of can't really overtake because then you'll be holding the people up. So I had to come up with a game plan to try and overtake these guys whilst trying to keep over the minute 35. Luckily I managed to do it, but uh, yeah, you guys can see that I uh, had a little bit of a trip off track and it was just all around a good time, so yeah.
first mistake, slowing down on the straight to try and stick to my delta. This was the first time I did this and I found out very quickly why you don't do that. Everyone else caught up to me, I got flustered and this happened. So as you can see right there, that lap was a 135.44, so I knew now that I had no traffic in front of me and now that I was lapping as pretty much as fast as I could go, all I needed to do was stay in front of the guys behind me and keep my delta. So these next couple of laps are probably really boring, but this is me sticking to the delta until the next issue arrives.
this lap here was my fastest of the day. It was a 35.07 and it set the benchmark for the entire rest of the session. So yeah, it's probably not the fastest looking lap, but it's the closest I got to 35 and that's all right with me. Here is where the second issue began. I unfortunately don't know how it happened, but we must have just been misjudging how much fuel we're actually using. But uh, yeah, I had about half an hour to go left in the session and I looked down at my fuel gauge and there was a big orange light and said the needle was on empty. So I was really stressed. I was peering out for if the car was having any misfires because I didn't know exactly whether the fuel gauge was working or not. Maybe it was broken or something, I was never told. Anyway, I thought it would be better to be safer than sorry, and I gave it a few laps, how much I was willing to push it, and if I heard any misfiring or any stuttering of any sort, I decided I was going to pull straight in or pull straight over and go slow for the rest of the lap. So luckily I didn't hear anything. I pushed it as much as I possibly could. And basically once that needle was at the very point where I wasn't willing to push it any further for another lap, I pulled it straight in and we quickly filled up. Using them that much. I don't know if it's all right because it's just some oil and grease on the next Yeah, okay. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Consistent 125 too, so it's been going really well, so. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Appreciate it. It's been good. Yeah. So, like, you know what app that is? What's that? Uh, this is Draggy. So, Draggy with the, the what's it call it? Um, but yeah, no, it uh, ties in with the little Draggy thing, so it's better, more accurate GPS. It's pretty cool. That should be enough. That should be enough. I got like, it's got like, so 33%. Yeah, go for it, go for it. Yep. Design. Beautiful. Pulled back out on track and I lost a spot to the Toyota. So now was my chance to keep above the 135 and catch this beast and overtake him. That was my goal for the rest of the session. This is how it played out. That was them gone. Once again, I was back out in front and I had all the time in the world to get those 135s in. So that's all I did for the rest of the session until I almost ran out of fuel again. But the session finished and I was stoked.
Alrighty, so we've had a pretty eventful day. It's been really, really cool actually. Um, my session was really, really great. I ended up going out and my first couple of laps were like 140s um, while I was behind some traffic and then I went off track and then I came back on. Amazing I didn't lose too much time, um, which was pretty funny. But aside from that, I don't know if you guys can see this. I'll put up a screenshot right now, but every single one of these, uh, you guys can see I did a 140, which is where I went off track, 138. After that, 135, 135, all the way down to I needed to fill up with fuel. And um, we went back out on track and I smashed out a couple more 135 so I was extremely consistent which I'm very very stoked about um, that was one of the biggest things that I wanted to do was make sure that I was trying to be as consistent as humanly possible and it was pretty easy the cars got a lot more in it so it was easy to lap at 135s because the thing would just do it all day it was absolutely awesome so yes yeah, so we're heading out for a second session now uh, I also I was in the uh, I was in the vomit seat <laughs> so um, yeah it was quite funny it just got to do what you got to do I kind of I I was joking about it in the morning, like it's probably going to be like Top Gear's thing where we have to like, you know, pee inside the car and stuff like that, which is not true, like we wouldn't obviously do that, but um, yeah, having vomit in the seat was obviously not ideal because the car was just cooking it and it just wasn't, wasn't great, so yeah, but I could definitely see it was getting pretty hot throughout the day and uh, it was very, very warm when I jumped in the car, but anyway, that was good fun. We're we'll, uh, not going back out in the car this afternoon, but we're going to see how we go, so fingers crossed the team does well we're doing all right so far I think we're sitting in second or third so should be good fun and uh, yeah so much fun what are we doing Matt? <laughs> <laughs> so we're about to start the second last session but yeah no, just over the far side of the track right now let's go Ronda guys so we actually finished off yesterday in second place which I was extremely stoked about um, I ended up getting a little bit unwell so I didn't film anything last night and if you guys can hear my voice today I am absolutely wrecked um, took so much out of me in that car yesterday it was so much fun and once again I want to give all those guys a massive thank you for letting me race Ronda yesterday it was so much fun all those guys are super nice and I just want to give a thank you to a quick few sponsors mainly Raceworks and Protex for making that car possible and uh, yeah massive thank you to all those guys including Tristan for letting me drive in that car I really hope this year hope I really hope this year I get a chance to be in that car again I feel like it's gonna be a lot of fun and who knows if I need a competitor we can get a car this year and can make it happen you can make it happen anyway guys thank you so much everyone for watching I very much appreciate it and definitely go check out Tristan's video because he has so much more of this entire day in depth with all the drivers and everything. So massive thank you once again. I'll see you all later. Peace out.